Hello, hello. We're back again at the table of annoying reflections to draw something new. And I'm using my mechanical pencil and my brush pen today. If you'd like to know what kind they are, you can look in the description. Um, now, a comment a few days ago asked how I go about drawing snow. And the answer is, uh, I don't. But when I do, it's really a very simple process. Because when you're drawing snow, you're going to want to leave a lot of white space. Um, I guess the true secret to drawing snow is not drawing too much at all. In fact, all you're going to draw is shadows. So, um, if you have a general idea of the shape of your terrain, just like, just throw in a couple of elevation changes, like we'll say there's a, a rise up here and it's kind of sloping downwards this way. Mm. And then plan out which kind of sunlight angle can we throw in in order to bring out these elevation changes. So I'm going to say the sun is shining this way today. And you do want to have a fairly low light source so that those you can stretch those shadows out. So if we know that there's a ridge here and our sun is going this way and this ridge is going down this way, then it's a simple matter of with our not drafting pen, lining in that ridge, and then lining in a shadow, or the extent of the shadow. And following the rules of the elevation changes, what I would do is put the top of the ridge in, in a more defined line. And you know my method? Since I add color to all of my maps, that would be the extent of the line work. And then I would color this in with like a, uh, did you just, did everyone catch that? Make sure you don't miss that little moment I had there. Uh, yeah, I would color in this shadow with like a blue shadow. Just look up any old picture of snow and you'll see you'll get an idea of the blue hue that the shadow usually takes on, depending on the time of day, of course. But, yeah, that's the extent of it. If you are just doing strictly black and white, then I might fill in this with some lines, just simple lines, and that darkens it enough that it looks like a shadow. And of course, oh gosh, what chaos of lids do I have going on here? Of course, we can't just have one ridge on the battle map. So what I usually do is I, I throw a couple of, a couple of shadows in over the surface. And now this, this is very simple, but the next one might look like this. And what I usually do is kind of a chaotic shape such as that and then I fill it in with an equally chaotic shape so really you're just kind of doing the elevation rules but without the difficulty of adding in the stony texture and then this optional step and I truly do mean optional because if you have any other method of filling that in I would take it but you know, this, this does look kind of stylish with the lines here. And I would always have these lines follow the same trajectory as your sunlight is falling, which I have failed to do spectacularly, but let's, let's pretend that this arrow is actually pointing this way. Now another little shortcut slash trick you can do in your drafting stage, make a couple of snow mounds and these will just be circles and ovals of rather random sizes 
just arranged like this. Being an Australian, I don't have much experience with snow, so this is the best experience I've had with it. Um, this is the extent of my experience with it, that's what I mean to say. And now, imagine these are raised hills to find the shadow just by rounding off this side and then stretching it out a bit. Round and stretch, round and stretch, round and stretch. Um, to say that in better English, I'm going to, drawing the shadow, I'm going to decide I mean, the shadow is going to come anywhere up to the middle point, just almost like a random amount up to that middle point. And then it's going to stretch a bit because I like to draw my snow scenes late in the day, so the shadows are quite long. <clears throat> and if we're to block those shadows in, thick line, thick line, thick line, Thick lines at the top of the ridge. I'm cheating with these ones because I didn't draft. Oh, these ones come together. We got thick lines. And we got thin lines. And if you want, you can factor in that because this circle is a raise, this shadow is going to come in and then kind of roll over it and come like this. I'm going to completely ignore that rule because this is essentially a shortcut to uh, adding a, a snowy surface. And then I'm going to use this one. Our light is coming from this way. Dash, 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 dash. Dash, dash, dash. This must be very exciting to watch. Well, I guess I can talk about something. Uh, these, these dashes, not to say I'm good at it at all, but this is just something you get better at with practice. If you're just starting out drawing, then adding evenly spaced dashes is going to take, it's going to be something that takes up a lot of your attention to do, and you'll probably do it rather slowly. But doing it a lot, will make it into a muscle memory and you can do it almost automatically. I'm not at that point, but, um, oh goodness, I'm having, a, I'm having a bad time with these lids. Uh, but other than, oh goodness, oh, I drawn on myself. Well, how embarrassing, I should cut that out, except that I don't do any cuts in these videos, do I? And then if we forget about our drafting lines, you'll see that this, though I've gone overboard on line thickness, because this is just a demonstration, you can see that this resembles kind of mounds of snow. Hmm. Oh yeah. If I were to do this again, um, because these mounds aren't significant enough elevation changes to warrant such a thick line here, I would really just use a thin line like this. Look, we're all learning today, even the teacher. And then what I would do, rather than taking circles, purely circles, much better just to do random kind of circular shapes. And if you just randomly throw these in, this, this takes a little bit more artistic sense. This is kind of the paint by numbers, but if you can pull this off, the random shapes, then I'd go with this, this method. And I also wouldn't use such a thick brush pen, thick brush pen purely for demonstration purposes. Hmm. Uh, so, this can be your paint by numbers, kind of beginner's level stuff. This is kind of the general theory. And this is the ideal that you want to go for. And this, that's a square. Uh, this here 
is the absolute ideal way to draw, which I haven't learnt yet. So one day I'll revisit this topic and teach you all about it. But until then, that is all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can glean some useful information from it. If there's anything you'd like me to cover in the future, please let me know in the comments. And you can check out all my maps and fun stuff there too. Okay, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.